Good afternoon, my name is Joe O'Hara, and today is 25th of April, 2024, and this is FTE uh, 217 Assignment 7. Um, this is our seventh week of this class. Um, this is a four-part assignment. We're going to go over what... Uh, we're going to analyze some, uh, some trigger maintenance and stuff like that, and kind of discuss when we should work along or on the trigger system uh, we're gonna perform a detailed inspection what kind of like what we're looking for whenever we inspect a firearm uh, check the safety system and the disconnectors in our firearms and then talk about what we're looking for and then we're also going to talk about what we think is going to be the easiest parts to work on and the most difficult parts to work on so first thing um, when it comes to trigger maintenance, uh, I don't, I don't, I only feel that you should work on the trigger when either one, you're upgrading your trigger to a specific type or something like that. So like if you shoot competition and like, uh, if you're a trap and skeet shooter and you're going to change out the trigger or work on that trigger of your shotgun so that way there you have a faster trigger pull or something like that or if you go to a lot of shooting competitions you need something with a little bit less trigger pull then that's when you want to work on your trigger or if you notice that you have a problem um, the sears not working the disconnectors not working something like that and you need to figure out why you have to perform that maintenance that's that's when you want to work on your trigger. Um, before you work on your trigger, like the uh, lecture said, you should take measurements of everything before and after you work on that trigger, especially if you're doing it for a customer because you, this will cover, you always want to cover your own self from somebody saying that you did something to their firearm that caused them to hurt themselves. All right, so always, what we say in the military, CYA, cover your ass. Whenever you're working on a firearm, even if it's your own, make sure you uh, annotate those proper areas. And then also, improper trigger maintenance can cause problems within your firearm, like causing it not to fire or causing it to uh, not fire consistently whenever you need it to and then also make it so you can take a semi-automatic firearm and turn it into a fully automatic depending on what you did to that trigger system okay so those are the those are the areas of the trigger system that uh we're kind of going over um whenever i inspect a firearm first thing i'm always going to do is I'm going to remove that magazine out of there and then pull on that charging handle make sure it is free and clear always make sure that you're in a safe position okay and then I'm gonna go from the tip of that barrel all the way down to the end of the butt and just inspect it look for anything loose dented cracked broken distorted anything anything that's looks out of place and or should not be in a specific position okay um, a lot of times people will hand you a firearm and say oh yeah it's perfectly fine and then when they go to pick it up they'll blame you for something that was broke prior to it um, it happens a lot of times I see it a lot so just I'm gonna go you know, muzzle all the way down, check your guard. I'm going to pull on it, twist it, make sure nothing's broke, you know, on that hand guard, stuff like that. Check the rail system, make sure it's not dented, broken, distorted. Um, I want to check that cover, your magazine release button, make sure everything works properly, your bolt catch, make sure that's operating properly safety make sure it goes on safe and off safe squeeze the trigger make sure it doesn't go and then squeeze the trigger 
you know, while it's on, on fire, make sure it fires properly with no round inside. All right, and that's what I'm looking for whenever I re uh, inspect a, a, a firearm, okay? And then I wanna check on that, that uh, assist button and then my charging handle, make sure everything's good to go. And then pull on that butt, make sure it's not loose, you know, it's not broken, distorted, you don't have any major corrosion going on, stuff like that, okay? And then I want to inspect that trigger, you know, really well before I start opening it up and pulling things apart. Um, safety system with the disconnector. Um, when, when they talk about the disconnect, what they're talking about is, let's pull this open. So, you have this, it's like a hook that holds your hammer in that, in that back position, okay? And what you're, what you want to do is you want to make sure that it's, it's operating properly. So, turn it on fire and you can release that, that trigger, you know, just make sure it doesn't slam forward just like that. And then if you look down inside there, this piece right here that's your disconnect all right so you want to push that hammer back down and then make sure it holds it just like it is okay because that's what's gonna make sure that your your sear is operating properly and your hammer sits in that back position because when that bolt slides back and forth as you're as you're firing as you're squeezing that trigger each time that's what's going to keep it back because if your disconnector starts wearing down or something like that that's what's going to turn it into that fully automatic which unless you have that special license or you're in that area where you can have that you're probably going to be in some trouble if that starts to happen and then um easiest and most difficult parts to fix i think the easiest will be your buffer spring and your your weight, your buffer weight in the back. Because to fix that, all you gotta do is push down on that button, pop it out. If you gotta, you wanna put in a new spring, new, new weight, super easy, just make sure you got the right one. Um, the most difficult, um, I don't think it, um, I'd say it would be your trigger mechanisms in there even though they have those those uh drop in but if somebody's trying to loose reduce the trigger pull or something like that then <clears throat> you you're going to be performing a lot of maintenance on it and trying different things to get that pull weight either decrease or increase whatever they're looking for and you can swap out springs, stuff like that, but when it comes down to it, it's really what the customer's asking for. And if they want, if they start off with like a, a five pound trigger pull and they wanna go to a three, you know, you're gonna pull all that apart, uh, swap out your springs, and then you're gonna have to test it each time or each spring that you swap out and then do a live fire test along with all your drop tests and all that stuff too. So those are, that's everything. Um, again, week seven, thank you very much, and I'll see you next week. Bye.